In today's news, in a sign that the VAT man is getting tough over unpaid tax, an electrician is banned for five years. The council, whose tenants haven't had an electrical safety check in over a decade, and we share some top tips to recession-proof your electrical contracting business. Welcome to Electrical News Weekly in association with Schneider Electric. Whether you're listening in the van, on site, or down at the wholesale counter, I'm Joe Robinson, and I've been through the best of the electrical industry news to save you the trouble. And as always, if you think you've spotted the words that I've been challenged to shoehorn into this week's news, then comment below or tag us on social media, and you could win a prize if you're the first to get it right. It appears that the VAT man is cracking down on unpaid bills and bad record keeping. A Nottingham electrical contractor has just been banned for five years over an estimated VAT liability of £100,000. Stuart Palethorpe was the sole director of electrical installation company OnForm Electrical Limited. The taxman petitioned to shut the business down in 2018 due to outstanding VAT arrears and the official receiver was appointed as liquidator. The subsequent investigation by the Insolvency Service found that for the last three years of trading, Palethorpe had failed to ensure that his business paid VAT returns. At the point of liquidation, OnForm owed the public purse £102,417. However, the lack of records prevented the official receiver from determining whether money taken from the business's bank account was used for legitimate business expenditure. As a result, the High Court gave Stuart Palethorpe a five-year disqualification order. It prevents him from becoming involved in the promotion, formation or management of a company without the permission of the court. Dave Elliott, Chief Investigator for the Insolvency Service, said that directors must ensure their companies pay the correct taxes. The electrician's ban should serve as a warning to directors that by failing to properly account and pay for your tax, you could lose the protection of limited liability. In other news, it's been revealed that electrical safety checks for hundreds of council tenants have not been carried out for more than 10 years. The investigation, carried out by Sandwell Metropolitan Borough Council in the West Midlands, discovered that 1,245 of its homes were affected. The checks have become mandatory every five years in England for privately rented homes, but with exclusions for social housing. However, the council said it aimed to carry out outstanding checks by December. The authority said the issue of outstanding checks was mainly due to electrical safety data not being on a system it could easily track. Extra electricians have been brought in to deliver EICRs with a target of 100 every day. The target of a regulated electrical contracting sector in Scotland is driving an increasingly passionate campaign by Select north of the border. The crusade got a boost this week after an unprecedented number of electricians rushed to add their names to its wall of support at a series of meetings held across Scotland this summer. 184 electricians from a wide range of Select member firms gave their backing to the organisation's long-running campaign for protection of title for the profession of electrician. The campaign has also been endorsed by Owen Thompson, the MP for Midlothian and the SNP Chief Whip. Meanwhile, down south in England, another campaign has started, this time to axe the government's £5,000 grant for heat pumps. Mike Foster, Chief of Industry Body Energy and Utilities Alliance, says that with the cost of living crisis, heat pumps have become far too expensive for most households, even with the support of the boiler upgrade subsidy. He says that the government is out of touch with the British public and that its renewable strategy is dead in the water. Foster says suggests that the taxpayer money spent on the boiler upgrade subsidy could be better used, providing insulation for lofts. According to data from the Energy Savings Trust, the £450 million allotted for heat pumps would provide 850,000 lofts with insulation. This could save households over £200 million a year on bills. With spiralling inflation and a recession looming, you too could probably do with saving a few quid on your bills. Dan Pollard, founder of Fergus, the admin app for electricians, has shared his top tips for tradespeople to recession-proof their business for the coming years. The first step is good cash flow. Work out your revenue and your fixed commitments. If ingoings won't cover outgoings, decide what needs to change. Set up payment plans to retrieve any owed money. Don't give credit always take deposits and invoice every day. Dan says that if you invoice within 24 hours, a customer is much more likely to pay in a day or two, so less likely to skedaddle, leaving you holding the bill. Only order what you need, reduce your non-productive time away from site, 
boost chargeable hours and get everyone used to working remotely. He suggests what he calls remote stand-ups. These are short meetings where the team remains on site but catches up via a video call. Dan says he has seen these do wonders for a business. They allow you to check in with your team to find out how the jobs are going and what everyone needs in order to finish on time. He suggests doing these a few times a week but keep it brief so that everyone can maximise their working hours on site. These meetings help keep everyone connected and offer a great service to your customers. In product news, a Guildford-based company has introduced an innovative DALI lighting control system, which, uniquely for a DALI system, doesn't need commissioning. The multi-load spectrum from Theus Craft allows the installer to set the DALI groups and individual aspect of each device via a rotary dial. The range comprises six core products, a PSU, a switch interface, a relay, the color dim rotary dimmer capable of tunable white control from a modular rotary module, a phase dimmer, and a PIR detector. The PSU supplies DC voltage for the DALI control devices. The DALI switch interface module then allows for two switch gangs of control when used in group mode and is also available as an emergency test device. This craft says its products can be used as standalone devices and promises that they also work seamlessly with other manufacturers' equipment to create a complete DALI system. A new EV charge point, the plug and drive, has been introduced by Gibbons Engineering Group. It's the first in its own range of chargers and complements its distribution of ABB's top end Terra AC wall box. The plug and drive is rated at 7.4 kilowatts and is compatible with all electric and plug in hybrid electric vehicles. It comes with three RFID cards, perfect for guests or for use without the app, and when using public charging stations. Also rolling out at the moment is the UK designed and manufactured EV iOS 1. It is compliant with the new regulations which stipulate that all EV home charge units must by default be set to charge outside peak hours and that each charging session must have a randomised delay of up to 10 minutes before starting to charge. The EV iOS 1 allows the customer to override these settings at any point via the large colour screen or the app. And for more information on the changes to those regulations, please check out the video that Gordon made on this subject. You'll be able to find a link to it in the description below. Yale has introduced a special heavy-duty van lock to help in the fight against tool theft. It features a zinc body padlock used for added strength for outdoor applications and a six-pin cylinder providing top protection against lock picking attacks. It also has a black powder coated heavy-duty steel hasp which provides protection against forcible attacks while reducing the risk of corrosion with outdoor use. It is certified to EN12320 and comes with fixing bolts and a step-by-step -step instruction manual for easy installation. Sounds like you'd need a pneumatic drill to get that thing off. In our refix survey this week, we asked how you're buying kit for your installs. 32% of you put in traditional orders with your electrical wholesaler, 17% of you order online from your wholesaler, and almost half of you, some 46%, are using a mixture of both. It'll be interesting to compare this with the results in a few years time to see how things have changed. And finally, an electrician whose boss made comments about his bald head has won a judgment in his favor at an employment tribunal. Tony Finn, an employee of the British Bung Company in Mirfield, West Yorkshire, clashed with his manager, Jamie King, the court heard. Finn was called bald, followed by an expletive, we'll leave that one to your imagination, during an argument with King. In his ruling, employment judge Jonathan Brain said that although industrial language was commonplace on this West Yorkshire factory floor, in his judgment, King crossed the line by making remarks personal to the claimant about his appearance. He said that there is a connection between the word bald on one hand and the protected characteristic of sex on the other, but the judge admitted that a barrister representing British Bung Company was right to point out that women, as well as men, may be bald. In his judgment, he found that King made the remark with a view to hurting Finn by commenting on his appearance. The court ruled that sexual discrimination had indeed taken place. Well, that's all from the Follically Challenged news team here at eFix for this week. In other great videos coming up this week on our YouTube channel, we've got a review of the Makita cordless kettle. And for long-term viewers who remember the Makita cordless coffee machine, you'll know that you're in for a treat with Gary's take on that. We've also got a Q&A on measuring light, which explains why my workbench has gone spotty. And it's hashtag training Tuesday tomorrow as we drop a brand new free training module to help you with your CPD on the subject of lighting control 
controls and how changes to the building regs affect them. So keep checking the know-how page on eFix for the live launch of that one. It's going to have a major impact on your installations. If you think you know the words that I've smuggled into today's show, pop your guess into the comments and we'll dig out a goodie bag prize to the first to get the right answers. If you can cast your mind back that far, the hidden words in our last podcast were skin flint and turntable. And the only person to get both was someone going by the name Orzo Orzo. So good their parents named them twice apparently. However, it was hidden amongst a plethora of other guesses from that individual, so a little bit of cheeky behaviour there, but we'll let it slide on this occasion as you were the only one to get it right. Anyway, to claim your prize, Orzo Orzo, click the link in the description below. Thanks for listening to this episode of Electrical News Weekly in association with Schneider Electric. Make sure you subscribe to receive the next update. Thanks for listening, and until next time, have a great week, stay safe out there, and remember, there's no such thing as a torque-calibrated arm.